All right, uh, good morning, everyone. So today we'll try to finish finally uh, module four so that uh, we can push through with the deadline of Lab XR2 on Monday. So again, if you have some questions about these things, uh, you can consult uh, either with me or with your lab instructors beforehand, or you can uh, also bring your questions to your lab classes on Monday, and your lab instructors will be more than happy to be of assistance, especially kung meron kayong mga technical questions about the content, and especially about the the coding process or the programming process for uh, for these methods, right? Uh, lab XR2 covers topics uh, on uh, piecewise linear interpolants and cubic splines, right? So last time we have seen what cubic splines are. So these are piecewise uh, interpolants where in each piece of the interpolating function is a cubic function between two consecutive data points. So instead of linear function lang, or straight lines lang yung pinagko-connect natin sa pagitan ng dalawang given interpolatory MCSs, ang ginagam, ang pinagko-connect natin ay mga cubic functions. And we have enumerated um, three more conditions. So aside from the interpolatory requirement and the requirement that uh, the function be cubic between two uh, consecutive MCSs, ni-require natin na si S, si S prime, at saka si S double prime ay continuous sa buong interpolatory interval. And again, we did so by enforcing continuity of these three functions on the interior boundary points. So kung mula kay x2 hanggang kay xn, dapat yung values ng function, ng uh, derivative at second derivative ng functions on the uh, on the common point shared by two consecutive s, s sub i's must be equal to each other. And we have seen that all these requirements uh, gave us 4n minus 2 equations, which um, uh, which gave us two conditions less from what is the ideal. Kasi para ma completely determine natin, kailangan natin ng 4n equations with 4n unknowns. Kasi 4n nga yung unknowns na inaanap natin. Uh, n na AIs, n na BIs, n na CIs, n na DIs. All right? But kulang tayo ng dalawa. So that means since we are lacking two conditions, medyo meron tayong free reign on adding some more conditions in order to completely determine the cubic splines. And one implication of that, I hindi unique ang cubic splines, all right? So because we are lacking two more equations, we can impose some more conditions to completely characterize the cubic splines that we are, um, that we are um, designing, okay? So starting from that definition, nakakuha tayo ng 4n minus two equations. We did some tedious and messy uh, algebraic manipulations on these equations to come up with the linear system you see on the screen right now. So equation 4.11 in matrix form. Now, ito ay isang supposedly n plus 1 by n plus 1 uh, system, all right, uh, of equation in matrix form. So I suggest you start encoding this, uh, at least yung uh, gitnang, uh, yung gitnang lines or gitnang rows, nung coefficient matrix, at saka nung um, matrix of a uh, vector of constants on the right hand side kasi ang idea rito ay pag na completely determine na natin yung matrix A saka yung uh, vector B papasolve lang natin to sa solver nyo using matrix inversion kasi wala pa tayong uh, numerical technique na nadi-discuss about solving systems of equations and that will be in math 175 pa so uh, we will rely on um, on intrinsic methods in your programming language in order to solve for the unknown vector x comprising of the n plus 1 values of c. So, ito yung usually ito yung mathematical uh, formula para compute natin yung vector of unknowns. Now, I forgot to mention last time kung bakit n plus 1 by n plus 1 yung system. Kasi sabi natin, di ba meron tayong n s sub i's, right? So, kasi n plus 1 data points, magkakaroon tayo ng n subintervals. So sa bawat subinterval, merong isang cubic function. So ibig sabihin, meron tayong n s i's na hinahanap. Alright? Kaya lang, so ibig sabihin, naghanap tayo ng n na, na parameter, uh, for n na parameters. Kaya lang, kung mapapansin nyo dito sa equation, kinumpute ko rin si c sub n plus 1. Pero sabi nga natin, ang hinahanap lang natin si c1 hanggang kay cn. 
Ang problema kasi, kailangan ko si C sub n plus 1 para compute yung ilang bi's at di's. So if you go back to um, the relations we have last time, if you look at the equation 4.7, okay, para compute si dn, so when i is equal to n, si dn ay equals to C n plus 1 minus C n over thrice h sub n. So in fact, to get dn, kailangan ko si C sub n plus 1. And I think the same thing goes for B sub N. If you look at equation 4.8, para mahanap si B sub N, kailangan ko si C sub N plus 1. All right? Kaya medyo kailangan ko pang i-extend further yung system. Instead na hanggang kay C N lang yung hanapin ko, kasi hanggang S N lang naman yung tinatry natin i-build, kailangan ko si C sub N plus 1 para makompute si D N at saka si B N. All right? So that's why merong extra row Pero the addition of that extra row still leaves us with two more conditions. Kasi nga, meron lang tayong um, 4n minus uh, two equations. Magdagdag kanya sa 4n minus 1. Kulang pa rin tayo ng dalawa. Okay? Kasi ang equations na natin naglalaro na kay C sub n plus 1. Okay? So today we'll try to, uh, to give some common conditions. I think we have two commonly used splines na i-define para makuha natin yung top and bottom rows for both the matrix A and the vector B. And the first one is called the not a not boundary conditions, right? So itong not a not boundary conditions, siya yung usually ginagamit kapag ka wala kang ibang conditions na alam. Kung wala kang added information na alam or wala ka talagang specific condition in mind, then you can just opt to use by default the not a not boundary condition. And the not a not boundary condition requires the spline's third derivatives or third derivative to be continuous. All right. Kasi remember, it's a definition of spline. Gusto lang natin ay si S, S prime, and S double prime to be continuous. If you don't have any other information about the function to be interpolated, then you might opt to, uh, to impose continuity of the third derivative, and uh, that will result to a not a not. Uh, cubic spline, right? So let's look at how it is derived. So if we go back here, okay. So remember, si S sub i of x ay equal lamang kay uh, a i plus b i x minus x i plus c i x minus x i squared plus d i x minus x i cubed, right? So continuity ng third derivative. And third derivative ni si ay ano lamang. So ito ay magzero ang third derivative. Ito ay magzero. Ito ay magzero. So ito lang yung matitira. Matitirang, uh, ito lang yung magbibigay ng third derivative na non-zero. In, fa uh, in fact, uh, the derivative here would be, tama ba, 6 d sub i. Okay? And then since we only want two conditions, all right, so... Gagawin, gagamitin ko lang siya dun sa first and last piece. So, basically, medyo uh, generic pala yung sinabi kong definition ng not a not. But specifically, what we want just to happen is continuity of uh, continuity of the third derivative between the first and second uh, sub-intervals and the last and the second to the last sub-intervals. So, I mean, I want... S sub 1 triple prime of x2 to be equal to S sub 2 triple prime of x2. And doon naman sa dulo, sa pinakahuling pair ng subintervals, I want S sub n triple prime of x sub n plus uh, x sub n. Tama ba? Uh, hold on. Aha, uh aha. -huh, uh -huh. Yes. S sub n minus 1 triple prime of xn i equal kay s triple prime sub n of x sub n right kasi dun sa dulo eto si x sub n plus 1 yung huling absisa eto limbawa yung para kay x sub n kasi ito yung kay x sub n minus 1 dito naggo-govern i si sn dito naggo-govern uh, sn minus 1 Dito nag-govern ay yung last piece, which is Sn. So I want the third derivative of S sub n minus 1 and S sub n to share the common value at their common boundary point, X sub n. Kaya 
ito yung condition na gusto kong impose para sa not a not boundary condition. Okay? Now, if we will use this, uh, these two uh, things, I'll just work on the first one, S1 triple prime X2 equals S triple prime sub 2 of X sub 2. Uh, and third derivative ng SI ay SDI, so it doesn't matter what the value of X is constant, yung 6DI with respect to X. So it doesn't matter if I am plugging in X2 or X sub N, laging ito lang yung form ng third derivative, right? So that means this guy would be 6D1 and this would be 6D2. Kasi yung third derivative ni S2 ay equals to 6D2. Right? For whatever value of x is, right? In particular for x2. And so here we see that d1 is equal to d2. Okay. Then I will use this information in equation uh, what? Ah, in equation uh, in equation 4.7. It says uh, c sub i plus 1 minus c i over 3h1, uh, 3hi. So, if you see D1, if I plug in I equals 1, we'll get C2 minus C1 over H1. And then CD2 I C3, on the line 3. C3 minus C2 over 3H2. Tama nga ba? Nanggaling siya dito kay 4.7. Pinlogging ko lang yung I equals 1 and I equals 2. Then, since by the... Uh, not a not boundary condition. Uh, they they are or they should be equal to each other. So ako ako tong equation na to. and then I'll just manipulate this. Multiply both sides by three, so the three uh, goes out. Wala na sila, so matitira na lang ay C two minus C one H two equals C three minus C two times H one. Tapos lipat ko sa Kan sa kaliwa lahat, and then I'll have what uh, C two H two minus C one H two minus C three H one, and then we'll have uh, plus C two H one equals zero, and then arrange ko lang siya. Probably I can multiply both sides by negative one just to make the leading coefficient uh, equal to a positive number. So I can write it as what? Uh, C1, H2. Uh -huh. And then we'll have uh, minus 2. Uh, sorry. Uh, tama ba? Uh, no. Minus H1 plus H2 times C2 plus C3, H1 equals 0. Tama nga ba? Pakicheck naman nung, uh, nung arithmetic ko, uh, yung algebra ko. I hope this is right. And then in vector matrix form, pwede ko tong isulat na H2 negative H1 plus H2 plus H1 times C1, C2, C3 equals 0. All right? So tingnan natin. Paano to papasok dun sa malaking system? So let me just copy this natin kung tama yung derivation natin. Paste. Okay. So this is what we are supposed to insert in the first row of our coefficient matrix and the vector of constants. So makita nyo, yung H2, nandun siya, negative H1 plus H2, there you go. And then H1 was there. And then the right-hand side is equal to zero. Okay. And then ganito rin yung gagawin nyo dun sa, or ganito rin yung ginawa Dito sa kabilang condition. So here you will see that uh, I think we'll have d sub n minus 1 equals d sub n. All right. And then you do the same thing as what we did here using equation 4.7. And then you'll see that you'll need to insert this, uh, this row. Kasi kailangan puno siya ng zeros. Kasi dapat ito ma-multiply dun sa last three. Right. So, ibig sabihin, ito dapat yung last three entries dun sa last row. So that when this gets multiplied to this, equated to zero, that's the equation that you should be able to get coming from here. Okay? And that completes our n plus 1 by n plus 1 matrix here. Okay? So ito yung matrix na kailangan yung isolve. 
So, maging itsura na siya, kompleto na siya na AX equals B. Ask your solver to compute for X. So, that will be A inverse B. And then, this will give us the C sub I's. And once you get the C sub I's, so, kailangan lamang, uh, balik tayo, makuha na natin yung C sub I's. Makukompute mo yung D sub I's using the C sub I's. The A sub I's are nothing more but the function values at the given abscissas. So, we're covered there. Tapos yung B sub I's, makukompute natin using A I's at saka C I's. And so, that will give us the complete uh, set of parameters for us to build S1 hanggang kay SN. All right? And that will give us what we call the not a not cubic spline. Okay. Uh, clear ba yun? Mapapansin nyo, mas ano to, no? mas uh, tedious. Hindi ganun ka conceptual yung, uh, yung derivation. Pero medyo maraming algebra involved. But I hope everything is making sense. So, challenge nga lang yung pag-encode nito. Right? Pwede nyo siyang manu-manuhin kasi... Uh, lalo na kung maliit yung, yung, maliit yung uh, system. Kasi tri-diagonal tri -diagonal ba siya? Uh, let me see. The resulting system. Hindi pala siya tri-diagonal. Pero sa bawat rows, tatlo lang yung non-zero entries niya possibly. Right? So, tapos ito naman, madali ring encode. Kaya lang paano pag binigyan ko kayo ng uh, 100 by 100 na system. Okay, so medyo mahirap na siyang i-encode uh, manually. Para mabait pa yung lab instructors nyo, kasi yung sa lab XOR2, um, maliit lang yung system na binigay. Kaya nyo pang manumanuhin. So, kung hindi nyo pa maisip paano i-automate yung pagde-define ng matrix. So, pwede nyo siyang pag-isipan kasi sa lab XOR naman kaya nyo pa siyang manumanuhin. Pero dahil pinadali na ng lab instructors yung lab XOR, baka sa problem set, pag merong computational problem, ay malaking system na ibibigay ko sa inyo. Nang ba, kukuha ako ng data mula sa World Bank website, uh, maybe thousands of data, so yun yung magiging problema nyo kung paano siya ipapasolve, right? But again, the idea is probably you can start building up a template, ipa-automate nyo dun sa programming language nyo yung pagde-define na itong uh, nitong coefficient matrix except possibly for the top and the bottom row, right? Ganun din yung sa right-hand side. Pag-isipan nyo na paano ito ipapa-automate, okay? Tapos, idadagdag nyo na lang yung top and bottom conditions kapag kaalam nyo na or nasabi na kung anong classing spline yung kailangan nyo gamitin, alright? So, I won't show that to you. So, pagplanuhan nyo na lang, pag-isipan nyo. Anyway, this is uh, AMAT152 stuff. So, yon. Uh, if you're using MATLAB, ang um, syntax, ang magiging syntax nyo para sa C sub i's, pwedeng gawin nyo C sub, uh, vector C, na ang laman ay mga C sub i's, pwedeng gawin nyo ay INV, this is the syntax for the inverse, inverse of A, matrix multiplication, I'm star, so times, or asterisk, times the right-hand side vector B. So, ibibigay nyo sa inyo yung mga C sub i's or a vector consisting of the C sub i's, C1 hanggang C sub n plus 1. I'm, I'm not familiar with Python, so hindi ko sure, pero malamang naman madali lang din yung syntax para sa matrix inverse. Okay? So let's look at a particular example. So in this case, uh, yung example like tungsten emittance. So here we are asked to provide a model for the emittance of, tans of tungsten as a function of temperature using the following data. So ito yung parang isang application niya. Um, gusto natin magkaroon ng model. Tapos makakakuha lang tayo ng discrete time measurement. Halimbawa nasa lab kayo. Tapos meron lang kayong access to, uh, to, certain, um, to certain devices that can measure the tungsten emittance with respect to some temperature that you will set. Halimbawa nag-set ka ng 300, uh, I don't know, oh, huh? I forgot what the... Uh, the, the units of measures here. Pero pag ang temperature mo ay 300 units, be it Celsius, Fahrenheit, or Kelvin, hindi ko tanda kung anong ginamit sa data. Pero kung 300 yung temperature, tungsten emittance is 0 0.024. Tapos gusto mo pa ng empirical data, tinaasan mo yung temperature to 400. Ito yung tungsten emittance na compute mo, and so on all the way to 1100 degrees. 
Kasi halimbawa, ito lang talaga yung maximum nung uh, device mo, all right? Nung uh, nung experimental device mo. So, we will settle with this data, all right? If you want more points, then uh kakailanganin mong mas maraming experiments ang gawin, all right? Pero halimbawa, ito na yung gusto natin. And then if you will apply the not a not boundary conditions in order to find a cubic interpolant or piecewise cubic interpolant or in other words cubic splines para sa set of data na yo na ito ito yung mga coefficients na makukuha niyo so ito yung AIs tama ba ito yung AIs BIs CIs DIs uh -huh, let me see mhm mm I think that uh, those are the coefficients that you need. A, B, can do double check or lang. Uh huh. 0 0.97, 0 0.003, but definitely, ato dapat yung leading coefficient. Okay, so I think this is fine. So ato yung mga coefficients. Pero kung iko compare nyo siya dito ay hindi magmamatch yung coefficients because remember, ang itsura ng mga a sub ng mga s sub i ay a sub i plus bi times x minus x sub i plus ci x minus x sub i squared plus di x minus x sub i cubed. Kaya yung, uh, yung b sub i dito ay hindi talaga siya yung coefficient ni x. Coefficient siya ng x minus x sub i. So there might be some, uh, some manipulations required in order to get this simpler form. Right? Pero alam ko lang naman ang merong Degree 3 ay yung last term, right? Ito lang yung magkakaroon ng x cube. Tapos yung x cube na to multiply by di. So this coefficient, or sorry, this coefficient must be the coefficient of x cube dun sa dulo. Yun yung, yun yung denouble check. So this ai might not be the same ai here. Kasi hindi siya to. Kasi magkakaroon ka ng constant bi times xi. Tapos dito magkakaroon ka ng x sub i squared times ci constant din yun and so on. Okay? Pero pag sinimplify nyo yung cubic spline, ay yung not a not cubic spline, form using this uh, set of parameters, ito yung makukuha yung function. Okay? So meaning you can take advantage of this since uh, say if you want to get the tungsten emittance when the temperature is say uh, 350 degrees, right? Eh, wala naman sa data yung 350 degrees. So instead of performing another experiment, which might be very uh, expensive in real life, so ang gawin mo na lang ay mag-plug in ka dito sa first condition. Kasi dito naman magpo-fall yung temperature na 350. Use x equals 350 into this uh, piece, you'll get the approximate, uh, the approximate tungsten emittance at that temperature. Okay? Uh, one disadvantage of this is that we don't have any condition or any model for tungsten emittance when the temperature is below 300 or beyond 1100. So yun yung disadvantage ng interpolation, which we have seen before, right? Na nagagarantee lang natin yung approximation inside the interpolatory interval. Okay, kaya nga interpolation siya, iba pa yung extrapolation. So yeah. That's one uh, difficulty or one dis uh, one uh, shortcoming of uh, interpolation. Okay. Now, just to verify, you can ask uh, your um, your programming language. In this case, I used uh, MATLAB in order to plot the uh, not a not cubic spline. So, yun yung NASA figure 4.5. So, the the circles represent the data points that I used in order to get the uh, the spline. And you see na na satisfy yung interpolatory requirement. Yung not a not cubic spline pass through all those given data points. And it's continuous by inspection. Also by inspection, we, we can see that it is smooth. Uh, I mean, differentiable siya dun sa interior points, right? Because walang, walang sudden turn or walang cusp. But I don't think S prime and S triple prime or their continuity can easily be seen visually, okay? Pero yeah, this is uh, the model for our tungsten emittance. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Any questions? Na-imagine nyo na ba kung paano siya uh, 
Paano siya program Paano masisimplify? So dito matetest na talaga yung programming. Yes, po, sir. Okay, thank you uh, for the feedback. Yeah. Sinimulan niyo na bang ano, uh, pag-isipan yung pagpo-program ng system? Kasi nga babait ng lab instructor niyo, kokonti lang yung data na binigay. So babawi ako sa sa <laughs> babawi ako sa problem set. Baka may computational ako inilagay. Pero ang ipapa-compute ko lang naman yung hindi pa natanong sa lab exer. Halimbawa, hindi kayo pinaglinear uh, interpolant sa exer, so baka yun yung ipagawa ko sa lab, ah, sa, sa problem set. Hindi ko i-repeat yung ginawa niyo sa lab. Okay? So may clue na kayo kung ano yung lalabas sa problem set. Okay. So uh, let's try example four. And this is revisiting the chances of passing that we... Uh, uh, computed using piecewise uh, linear interpolants last time. So same data, MAT17 for exams between January 2013 and uh, January uh, 2014. Tapos we still are looking for the probability or an approximation for the probability that a randomly selected MAT17 for exam, uh, exam score during that time period will be passing. Right. So same as CSAS yung ginamit, 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2 until 1. And if we will use the cubic uh, not a not spline or a not a not cubic spline, ito yung makukuha nating model para sa probability density function uh, corresponding to the normal distribution. Okay. And again, since I want to approximate the probability that the exam score is passing, integrate ko lang itong function na to, itong si S, from 0 0.6 to 0 0.7. So I'm after this interval. But since um, they are uh, the, the the function has uh, different behaviors on this sub intervals, kailang kung hati yung integral, right? Kita nyo na yung detalye nito last time. So if you will integrate s from 0 0.6 to 0 0.7, so gagawin yung siyang, ah sorry to to one, integrate yung siya sa bawat sub interval, so you will get a total integral of about 34.39%. So that means on the average, um, or I mean, uh, the probability that a randomly selected score would be passing is around 34.39%. Okay. Uh, which is malapit dun sa nakuha nating uh, approximation from piecewise linear interpolants na about 34.5% if I'm not mistaken. Though I forgot to uh, I forgot to compute what is uh, the actual value or the machine precision value for the integral para sana na compare natin sino yung nagbigay ng mas magandang approximation. But perhaps I can do that next time uh, or later kung may time papa compute ko siya kay Matematica kung ano yung uh, uh, best approximation for the probability. Tasi compare natin ano yung mas maganda using yung piecewise linear o gamit itong not a not um cubic spline okay now aside from the uh aside from the not a not uh, cubic spline there's also one usually used type of cubic spline but that will that will require another data so on data na uh, posibleng uh, idagdag natin ay yung values ng first derivative dun sa endpoints okay so kung alam natin yung value ng f prime kay a at saka kay b, so ibig sabihin ito yung value ng derivatives din sa magkabilang endpoints ng interpolatory interval, then we can incorporate that into our um, into our system of equations, right? Kasi nga meron naman tayong dalawang conditions na bakante, so baka naman pwede natin silang magamit, right? So let's see how this will help us try natin i-derive so ang alam natin ay f prime of a ay uh, given din sa problem. And we want this to coincide with s prime of a, which is natural to ask. Dahil alam natin yung derivative sa left end point. So yun di yung dapat i-assign natin to be the derivative of the cubic interpolant. Okay? Now here, let's compute for... Uh, oh, by the way... Uh, there's only one function that governs the behavior at x equals a, yun yung s1. So gusto ko yung s1 prime of a ay equal kay f prime of a. And also, if we know f prime of b, 
I want that to be equal to S prime of B. But for B, the governing piece of the spline S is S sub N. So I want S sub N prime of B to be equal to F prime of B. Okay. But in order for us to get the mathematical implication of these equations, kailangan ko muna i-compute si S sub I prime. Kasi apply ko siya mamaya kay I equals 1 at saka kay I equals N. So the derivative is what? The derivative would be B sub I plus 2C sub I X minus XI plus 3DI X minus X sub I um, squared, right? And then if I plug in I equals 1, that's a ko na yung pagpa-plug in ng X1. Remember, ito si S1 prime of A. Kasi si A si X1. This will just become what? B1. Tama ba? Kasi ito ay magzi-zero. Ito ay magzi-zero. So natitira lang si B1. Okay. And then I will use... Uh, I can use this in equation 4.8. Kung mapapansin nyo, si equation 4.8, siya yung nagbibigay ng equation corresponding to the B sub i's. Okay. But again, we want B1 to be equal to F prime of A. Kasi nga, gusto ko yung S sub 1 prime of A equal kay F prime of A. And this is a constant insofar as the problem is concerned. Dapat given yung F prime of A. So this gives us the following equation. Dapat si F prime of A ay equal kay A2 minus A1 all over H1 minus 2C1 plus C2 over 3H1 nang galing dito. Okay. So dun siya nang galing with I is equal to 1. All right. And then let's just isolate the C sub I's to one side kasi remember, ang pinibuild natin ay ang unknown ay mga C sub I's. So gusto ko sila ay nasa kaliwa. So I can manipulate this and have what? I'll have 2C1 plus C2 over 3H1 equals A2 minus A1 over H1 minus F prime of A. And then I can multiply both sides by 3. So ito ay magkakaroon ng 3. Tapos ito ay magkakaroon ng times 3 then. All right. So that means we'll have what? We'll have 2C1 H1 plus C2 H1 equals thrice A2 minus A1 over H1 minus 3 F prime of A. Or in um, vector notations, ito ay magiging, uh, what? Ito ay magiging 2 H1 and then C2, uh, sorry, not C2, H1 times C1, C2 equals this guy. Okay. Tapos ito yung idadagdag natin dun sa first row. Okay. So let's see how this fits in into our uh, equation so far. So itong 2H1, yun. Kaya nakuha yung first, uh, entry sa first row, first column. Ito si H1. Dapat sila ay nandun sa first two columns kasi dapat ma-multiply sila by C1, C2. Kaya dapat pag itong buong row, pinultiply nyo dun sa buong vector of unknowns, dapat ang product ay 2H1, C1 plus H1, C2. Kaya nakuha natin ito. Tapos yung right-hand side nila ay ito. Okay, and then you can do the same thing for the last uh, row. Ito naman manggagaling sa equation na to. I guess you'll just need to do the similar manipulations, but with i equals n. And with that, you will see na ito yung kailangan. Involves si cn at saka si c sub n plus 1. That's why you need to put h2 and 2hn at the last uh, two columns para pag minultiply nyo to, with this one, which is required when you do the matrix multiplication, you'll eventually get uh, uh, you'll get H 
n c n plus two h n c sub n plus one equal to this guy. Okay, and that completes the system of equation to give us the clamp cubic splines. Or by the way, niko pala na 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 pangalanan ano yung clamp cubic splines. When you know the derivatives or the values of the derivatives of the function f, at least the first derivative, sa boundary points A and B, tapos inimpose mo siya sa conditions to completely characterize the cubic spline, what you will get would be the uh, clamp cubic spline. Or other term for it is the uh, complete cubic spline. Okay. So these are just two examples of splines that you can define. But I hope that our derivation will give you the necessary tools para mag-invento ng sarili yung uh, cubic splines. So ang requirement lamang ay makapagdagdag kayo ng first and bottom row dun sa system of equation at dapat may solution, right? Hindi dapat non-invertible etong matrix na to. So if you impose any condition, whatever you like, for the top and the bottom row, kahit nga mag-random ka lang eh, though ang problema ron, hindi natin alam gano'ng ka-effective ka yung cubic spline. Alam mo lang, naka-invento ka ng sarili mong cubic spline that satisfies the five conditions ng definition ng cubic spline. We don't know how useful it is, pero at least may sarili kang cubic spline. Pwede mo siyang pangalanan kung wala pang ibang gumagamit nun. And that's the beauty of doing it this way. Instead of just giving you right away, ito yung clamp cubic spline. Yung formula kanina, yung para sa not a not cubic spline. So uh, deriving this will give us an idea how to manipulate this and how to create our own model or our own cubic spline. Okay? Pero ang kagandaan dito sa mga established uh, type of cubic splines that we have just discussed, alam na natin yung ibang mga properties niya. And they were, the, they were either defined due to their theoretical um, significance or dial sa utility niya. Okay? So isang magandang property ng clamp uh, cubic spline, siya yung may pinakamababang curvature. Okay? So in the next few uh, pages, we will define what the curvature of a function is. So the curvature of a function f at a point x in its domain is given by the function kappa. So si kappa, siya yung nagbe-measure gano'ng ka Gano'n ka curvy, uh, hindi ko alam kung paano siya Tagalogan o i-Filipinize. Basta kung ano yung curvature, gano'n kalaki yung curve ng function at a specific value of x. So basically, it is the value of the second derivative, which we knew from uh, math 36, siya yung nagbibigay ng concavity ng function at a given point, right? Pero yung concavity depends on being positive or negative, kung concave up or concave down. Pero yung absolute value niya, siya yung parang magnitude or measure kung gano'n siya ka-concave up or ka-concave down. And it is divided by this guy, which sort of reminds me of the formula for the uh, formula for the um, for the arc length, right? So parang ganun ko siya ini-interpret. Kamukha siya ng formula para sa arc length. So basically, this is the ratio between uh, the uh, the magnitude of the concavity and the length of uh, the length of the of the curve representing the function f at uh, at any given point. Okay. Pero this actually is approximately equal to f double prime. Um, I won't go into the details how this was derived, pero it is a good approximation for f double prime. Though the function kappa will give us the measure how curvy a function is at a given number. So if we want to get the total curvature of a function f over the interval a, b, we just need to sum this up all over the interval a, b. And that will just be approximately the integral of the square of the second derivative over a, b. Okay. Now, the, the result that I mentioned earlier, that the clamp cubic splines attain the minimum uh, curvature among all functions, I give as a theorem 4.2. 
So it says na kung si S yung clamp cubic spline, tapos si J is some smooth interpolating function with the clamp boundary conditions para kay F, then this inequality is true all over the interval AB. Okay. I don't think I will uh, give you, uh, I will give much details about, or I will ask you to answer problems requiring the minimum curvature property. It's just like a sort of a trivia kung ano yung kagandahan ng paggamit ng clamp cubic splines. So siguro at most sa XR or sa problem set, sasabihin ko lang ay find the cubic spline with the least minimum curvature. Or actually, hindi nga lang siya para sa lahat ng cubic splines. Yung clamp cubic spline, yung may pinakamaliit na curvature among all interpolating functions that are smooth uh, and satisfies the, uh, the clamp boundary condition. So pag kinolekta natin lahat ng interpolatory functions para sa sa isang function f doesn't matter if it's the algebraic interpolating function it's a cubic spline or it's any other um, smooth interpolating function satisfying the clamp boundary condition ang mananalo pa rin sa pababaan ng curvature ay yung uh, clamp cubic spline okay uh, siguro of more importance would be theorem three. So theorem three is we are um, we are giving the error bound, but this error bound only applies for the clamp cubic spline. Okay. Hindi ko maalala kung bakit ni ko nasinama yung uh, error term para kay not a not boundary condition. But okay, let's just go by the vertex and uh, gamitin na lang natin yung error bound para sa clamp cubic spline. So you can expect probably in the X or in the problem set, I will ask you about the error bound associated with a clamp cubic spline, but not with the error bound corresponding to the uh, not a not cubic spline. Kasi hindi ko naman siya binigay dun sa lecture. Okay? Now, ito daw yung uh, maximum error. The maximum error would be bounded by this quantity. But again, this uh, will require F to be uh, smoothed four times. Dapat si F hanggang sa fourth derivative niya ay continuous on the closed interval AB. And again, this condition is designed to guarantee that this maximum will exist over the interval AB using the extreme value theorem. So kung makikita natin ngayon, uh, kunin mo yung maximum value ng fourth derivative, multiply mo sa 5 over 384, Tapos i-multiply mo by the fourth power of the longest uh, of the length of the longest interval. Tapos yun yung magiging error estimate natin para sa maximum error. Okay? So probably let's try to illustrate theorem 4.3. And we'll end here. So we'll revisit uh, the textbook problem from, uh, from the piecewise linear interpolants. So, i revisit natin yung example 4.2. Balik tayo kay textbook publisher. Gusto niyang gumawa ng table of values for sine and cosine, starting from 0 to 45 degrees. Tapos, pinapahanap na sa atin, ano dapat yung step size, yung maximum step size, para yung error ay hindi lalampas ng 10 to the minus 6. Pero this time, instead of using piecewise linear interpolants, gagamit tayo ng clamp cubic spline. Ah, uh, bakit nang we make sense na gamitin yung clamp cubic splines? Kasi yung requirement lang naman kay clamp cubic spline, alam natin yung derivative kay A at saka yung derivative kay B. Si A dito ay 0 degrees, si B ay 45 degrees, si F ay either sine or cosine. So madali lang naman siya ang uh, i-compute yung uh, derivative. Ipa-plug in lang natin si 0 saka si 45. Kaya natin i-define yung clamp cubic spline. Alright? So, kaya siguro napili nung textbook publisher, yeah, gamitin ko yung clamp cubic spline. Kasi alam ko naman yung first derivative ng functions to be interpolated on the boundary points. Okay? Now, gusto natin hanapin si H. So, we want to find appropriate values of H. So that the error in the interpolation, okay, so yung max error, ay hindi lalampas ng 10 to the minus 6. All right? 
But in order to ensure that the maximum error will not go beyond 10 to the minus 6, so we can set 5 over 384 h to the fourth maximum of the absolute value of the fourth derivative evaluated over excess from 0 to pi over 4. Dapat ay mas maliit sa 10 to the minus 6. Kasi the left-hand side is larger than any error, right? So if I'll be able to make this smaller than 10 to the minus 6, then I am guaranteeing that the error for any point between 0 and pi over 4 will not exceed 10 to the minus 6, right? Okay, pagsabayin ko yung kay sine at saka kay cosine. Kasi yung fourth derivative naman ng sine at cosine ay either sine or cosine lang, lang, lang naman with addition possibly of a multiplier positive or negative one. And naka-absolute value. So, ibig sabihin, I, 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 I can, for, uh, I can, uh, I, uh, I can forgo computing the actual fourth derivative. Alam ko lang naman, either sine or cosine siya, positive or negative, naka-absolute value. So, alam, alam ko siya is sine or cosine. The sine or cosine siya, ang maximum niya from zero to pi over four or over any interval I plus or minus one. Kasi pero naka absolute value nga, so plus one lang ito. So I can replace this guy by one. Uh, pero pwede nyo pang palitin para kay, siguro kay sine, kasi ang fourth derivative ni sine ay tama ba, sine din. So pwede nyo mapababa yung step size. Pero if I will replace this one by one, I am still covered. Kasi mas malaki, si yung, mas malaki yung one, then the maximum value of either the sine or the cosine value. So I would like to set 5 over 384h to the fourth to be less than 10 to the minus 6. Because again, this guy is less than or equal to 1. So if I'll be able to uh, enforce this inequality, then we're good. Yung error ay hindi pa rin lalampas ng 10 to the minus 6. And then I'll solve for h. I'll get h to the fourth less than or equal to 384 over 5 times 10 to the minus 6. Take the fourth root of both sides. Ito yung makukuha nating uh, value for h. So we can take any value for h as long as it will not exceed the fourth root of 384 over 5 times 10 to the minus 6. This guy is approximately, inalkyo ko na siya kanina. 0.093614 regions. And that is about uh, 5.36 degrees. Okay. So, ibig sabihin, the textbook publisher can afford to have an increment of about 5.36 degrees dun sa table of values niya to ensure that the approximations using the clamp cubic splines will not exceed 10 to the minus 6. And makikita nyo, malaki na yung allowable uh, increment. So, ibig sabihin, hindi ganun kadaming uh, data points yung kailangan niya para lamang ma-ensure na yung error ay hindi lalampas ng 10 to the minus 6. Compared to, dun sa nakuha natin sa piecewise linear interpolants. Dun sa piecewise linear interpolant, ang nakuha nating maximum increment ay 0 0.16 degrees. At pag nag-increment ka ng 0 0.16 degrees, so that means ilan? From 0 to pi over 4, medyo, or from 0 to 45 degrees, ang daming points ang kailangan natin para mag na yung error ay hindi lalampas sa 10 to the minus 6. Kasi bago ka makaabot sa 45 degrees, kung ang step size mo lang ay 0. 0.16 degrees. Para makaabot sa 1 degree, kailangan mo ng about uh, between 5 and 6. Tama nga ba? Yeah. I think between 5 and 6 uh, data points. So I'm daming computation. So about 6 times 45. So that's going to be what? 6 times 45. So rough computations lang to. Uh, you will need 270 excess para makaabot ka from 0 to 45 degrees. Kung gagamit ka ng piecewise linear interpolant, na yung error hindi lalampas ng 10 to the minus 6. Compared kung gagamit ka ng clamp cubic splines, Ang allowable step size mo ay 5 degrees or 5.36 degrees. So pagpalagay natin 5 degrees na lang kasi ang 
mga HS na kailangan nating piliin ay hindi lalampas ng 5.36 degrees. So pwede nating i-assume okay, uh, para lang medyo maganda yung hatian, gawin kong H equals 5 degrees. So kung 5 degrees siya, kailangan mo lang ng 9 data points dito. 9 or 10 data points. Dito kailangan mo ng 270 or 271 data points. So mas malaki yung mat mas kakaunti yung data points na kailangan natin sa clamp cubic splines. Pero sino yung mas efficient? Piecewise linear o piecewise uh, or clamp cubic splines? Computationally speaking. Kasi kung dito, kailangan natin ng uh, not 9 points, I think 9 subintervals. Kung 9 subintervals yung kailangan ko, 9 subintervals. So ito yung value ni n. Approximately yan yung value ni n. Ilang unknowns ang kailangan natin? Meron tayong apat na unknowns sa clamp cubic splines. So here we'll need 300, uh, sorry, we'll need 36 uh, coefficients or parameters. Ito yung mga A1, A2, hanggang D, hanggang D8 and D9. So 36 parameters yung unknown. Pag gumamit ka ng piecewise linear interpolants, Dalawa lang, di ba? Sa bawat interval, meron lang tayong dalawang unknown, yung AI at saka BI. So, you will need 540 parameters para sa piecewise linear interpolant. Okay? So, kung makikita nyo, in terms of number of parameters required, mukhang mas efficient gumamit ng clamp cubic splines kasi 36 parameters lang yung kailangang hanapin. Pero hindi pa rin natatapos yung analysis. Kasi para makompute yung 36, parameters, medyo maraming dadaanan. <laughs> Kailangan mag-solve ng matrix, tapos though magiging, uh, ano ba yung matrix? Magiging 10 by 10 lang naman yung matrix. So, siguro ko konti yung operations na kailangan. Pero sa piecewise linear interpolant, alam natin yung mga A sub I, sila lang yung function values. Tapos yung mga B sub I, sila lang yung mga slopes. So, siguro kahit 540 yung unknown sa piecewise linear interpolants, Baka mas madaling compute yung mga AIs at mga BIs. So perhaps this will entail easier calculations, kaya lang mas marami sila. Pero medyo malaki pa rin yung disparity, di ba? Sa piecewise linear, 540 yung kailangan natin hanapin. Tapos sa pagkocompute ng bawat isa, baka madali lang naman sila. Pero dun sa clamp cubic splines, 36 nga lang yung kailangan natin i-compute. Kaya lang baka komplikado bago tayo makarating sa bawat isa dun sa 36 na yon. But basically, it's still a uh, uh, it's still a battle between how do you compute each of the parameters. Para makita kung sino yung mas computationally efficient. And these two uh, algorithms or these two methods will provide us the same level of accuracy, right? Alam natin na meet niya yung error threshold. Ang kasi gusto lang naman natin hindi lumampas yung error sa 10 to the minus six. So it, it gives us two options: either you compute for 36 parameters and get a clamp cubic spline, or solve for 540 parameters and get a piecewise linear interpolant. And lagging my battle pa rin doon. Okay? So, but these are just rough numbers. Hindi ko sinasabi na ito na yung talaga number of parameters required. Rough estimate lang siya, pero I, I hope you get the point, right? So these are the ballpark, uh, these are ballpark figures, so hindi siya yung specific. Pero in numerical analysis, isang consideration yan. Yung uh, efficiency ng dalawang methods. These two methods can provide me the same level of accuracy, but which one will be more computationally efficient? Okay? Especially if N is very large or the number of data you're using is very large or halimbawa naman costly yung pagkuha ng data. So dun sa piecewise, uh, uh, dun sa cubic spline, sampung data points lang yung kailangan natin. Sa piecewise linear interpolant, 271 data points yung kailangan natin. E kung masyadong mahirap maghanap ng data, so doon ka na lang sa piecewise linear interpolant. Asa, doon ka na lang sa cubic spline. Pagtrabawuhan na lang natin yung pagkocompute ng 36 parameters. Kasi nga baka mas mahirap mag-collect ng data kesa mag-compute ng matrix uh, system. Okay? So yan yung, mga, yan yung mga pumapasok sa isip ng mga applied mathematicians o ng mga... Um, even mathematicians, kung theoretical yung problem, 
Ganito pa rin siya inaatake kung kailangan mo ng numerical simulation. Same level of accuracy, which one I choose. So maraming factors involved. But at least I hope in Math 174, we'll be giving you the idea ano yung mga factors na kailangan natin i-consider uh, na i-lay down sa table para ma-determine ano yung pinakamagandang method for a specific application. Okay? And with that, uh, we'll end uh, the discussion of Module 4. So next time or next week, we'll start with discussing uh, Module 5. So uh, dito sa rest ng Module 4 naman, puro additional info na lang yan. Uh, your lab, uh, the lab instructors uh, provided us with uh, a Python command here. So pwede nyo siyang gamitin. Or if you want MATLAB, you can uh, do MATLAB. Uh, uh, maganda tong, uh, figure 6. Sa figure 6, makikita nyo yung disadvantage ng paggamit ng, linear, uh, ng piecewise linear interpolant. Kasi kapag ka nag-approximate tayo ng smooth function, makikita nyo yung piecewise linear interpolant niya. Medyo may jagged, period, uh, may jagged portions. So dito may sharp turn, dito may sharp turn, may sharp turn dito. So hindi siya, hindi siya talaga continuous. Ah, sorry, hindi siya differentiable dun sa mga boundary points. Compared sa cubic interpolant, makikita nyo na, oh, mas maganda nga yung, yung approximation niya. Tapos smooth pa yung uh, nakuha nating piecewise linear interpolant. However, this entailed a lot of computations compared to just the piecewise linear interpolant. Okay? So kung hindi ka naman talaga ka-concerned about, the, uh, about the, differ, uh, the smoothness of your approximant, so pwedeng gamitin nyo na lang yung piecewise linear interpolant, makakatipid kayo ng computing power. Right? But again, that's up to the specific application that you're looking for. Okay? So any questions? Okay, kung wala naman, oh, so, uh, all right, thank you. So, paganda nyo na, lab excerpt 2, do on Monday, so start doing it. Uh, and then, um, yeah, and then we'll start with module 5 on Tuesday. So, thank you guys for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed the rest of the day. And then, let's see each other again on Tuesday next week to start talking about module 5, which will be about curve fitting. All right? So, bye guys. Bye, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Paul.